Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to show you today how to transfer an image that you download into your Bible. And I'm going to be journaling John 6, 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So I have drawn a picture, and you could download this one on my website, link in the description down below. But you can see I've got two sheets of paper. The one on the right, which is easier to see through, is vellum. The one on the left was tracing paper. You can use both, but you get a little texture on the tracing paper, so sometimes the vellum is a little easier, which is why I use it. And I'm tracing the image with a black pen so that I can transfer it into my Bible. And I've even done some ad adaptations to it. I thought, what if I have some areas where the bread throws, shows through the jam that's going to be on the toast? So get the joke. He's the bread of life. Without him, we are toast. Well, if you decide to use an image like this one, you can turn it any which way. You can do all kinds of things to it to make it your own. You don't have to replicate just what the sketch that you've downloaded has. And I could see through this fairly well. And you can see through it better in person <laughs> than here on, on camera. But if you can't see through it, and I know my eyes are getting older and it's easier to not have to try to see through things, color on the back of your tracing paper. Now you could color on the back of the piece of paper that you printed it off the internet with. You could certainly do that, but it's harder to line it up. If you put it onto some tracing paper or vellum like I have, you can see where it's going to land on the page and adjust it as you need to. I'm going to use ink tense pencils. These are a watercolor type of pencil, and that means they're water soluble. These are a little different than some of the other watercolor pencils. They're a little more stable, even though on Bible paper, I have found that you can re-wet them even if they're dry. But for the most part, they're not going to do that on their own, so don't worry about that if you're using watercolor pencils in your Bible. But watercolor pencils are a great option for those who want a watercolor look, but they're a little scared of a brush. So it allows you to do the drawing portion with your pencil, which is a more comfortable, more natural thing for most of us since we've used pencils our whole lives and get used to the idea of using a brush with it. Notice that so far I don't have a sheet of paper underneath of this. That's what I normally do when I'm doing any wet medium so I don't drip down the side of my page. But since I'm using watercolor pencil here, I didn't think I was going to make much of a mess. So you can do this without actually having something underneath. I would recommend that you do, however, because I will add that later on. These are little spots that I thought would be fun to have in the bread or in the, the jam where you see the bread through it. And then while it's still wet, I'm doing what I shouldn't be doing. I should be waiting for it to dry first. I could even iron it first if I wanted to. But I decided, oh, while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'll just do my, my pencil work. Well, see that little spot in the bottom down there? That was where I touched the pencil to wet paper. And if your pencil is on wet paper, you're going to get a big splooge. Now, sometimes that splooge is going to be easily removable. But see that spot? spot right there, that's again touching it to water. So it's more helpful with watercolor pencils if you wait until it's dry. Have a little patience, but if you've watched my other channel, I have a crafting channel as well, and I'm pretty much never patient. I always have things bleeding because I don't do very good at waiting. So I'm going to finish coloring my jam now and add a second kind of red to it. So I, there's no science to why I'm picking different reds. I just wanted a little variation in the color of the jam that's on here. You could also do purple jam, whatever color your favorite jam or jelly or preserves or whatever that you would like to put on your piece of toast. And then I'm just going to paint over top of it. And you saw earlier that, you know, painting with water turns that into uh, a, a watercolor. But in a large area like this, sometimes you may have to scrub a little bit with the brush in order to melt that into watercolor. And you want to try to make sure that you keep the edge moving. If you let the edge dry, sometimes you'll get a hard edge there. But notice that that big splooge that I had coming across the middle of my, my jam area that I kind of hit that wet spot with the pencil has sort of disappeared. So that was a good thing that it's melted away and didn't end up being a giant spot. So I've uh, dried it and ironed it and 
and I've done that by putting a sheet of paper on top and below to iron it for you know 15 seconds or so to flatten it out a little bit and then I can go over it with another layer of color and as I was doing this I was thinking you know those little spots of the bread showing through look more like like holes poked in it or something but I thought well let me leave them and see once I put the text on maybe that will help Another way that you can move the color around on the image is to scribble your pencil down and then move it with a baby wipe. And different baby wipe brands and different ages of baby wipe, shall I say, um, ones that are drier or ones that are wetter will work a little differently from each other. So here's how I do the ironing, by the way. So I've uh, gotten it all flattened out and now I want to put my words on there and I definitely can't see through all the color to trace the words. So I'm scribbling on the back with a pencil, just a number two pencil, to transfer the words as well. And note that anytime you trace words on a, on something like this, they may not line up with those horizontal lines on your Bible. So what I like to do is kind of go through and figure out which lines do I want to make them align with. So I want to take the, the text and see if there's any adjustments that I want to make. Do I want to make the left and right edges line up? Do I want to stretch the word out a little further, make my letters a little wider or a little closer together? And I start, like I wanted to make the, the word Jesus and the word bread the same height. So I kind of calculated there were three lines in Jesus, three lines in, in bread, and then there's two lines in between each one of them. So I kind of did a little bit of math for myself to help me get the text laid out the way that I want to. And then I put the first letter and the last letter so that my word Jesus end, begins and ends in this, the right spot. And then I could just put the middle letter down and fill in. And that way you don't run out of space at the end. And I was a little more confident with the word bread because I was lining up the number of letters under the J-E-S-U-S. -S. That was a little bit helpful. And then life is going to run a little short because my jam runs a little short. So there you go. And I'm using two different widths of pen, a number one for the big words and a 0.5 for the smaller ones. So there you go with that. And by the way, the idea for this came from Twitter. I have been like following the Twitter thread of the, uh, the church signs when people post funny church signs. And I thought this one was cute enough that it deserved being in a Bible. I I've saw it a while ago and it's been rumbling around in my head. And when I was reading John 6 the other day, it just seemed like I needed to do that one. So I had a little bit of white highlights with my white pen, my white gel pen. And then I realized those little spots were not working for me at all. So I just took them out. Easy to do. You can go over this and add richer color with your watercolor pencils again and again and, and repair that if you wish. You can go over it with more colors with your baby wipe. You can put more water on it and that sort of thing and be able to repair that a little bit for yourself so that it comes out the way that you're envisioning it to look. So there is how you transfer an image. Just color on the back of your tracing paper and that will help you to transfer the image onto your Bible paper. I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, make sure you hit that like button. Share it with your Bible journaling friends and let them know about this channel and all that sort of good stuff. And I'll see you in the Facebook group. There's also a link in the doobly-doo to the Facebook group. You can see what everybody's doing over there. Have a great week.